Ja, du schluckst. Du kann mir jetzt auch nicht sehen, wer das ist. That's Dorothy. She's two years older than me. Then there's Renata and Anna-Marie. Renata Klotz still recognizes her sisters. This is my family. You recognize them all? Of course. It would be awful not to be able to remember your family. That confidence is misleading, and it's a symptom of her disease. Renata Klotz has Alzheimer's. She forgets things from one minute to the next. What did she have for lunch? Who came to visit yesterday? And lots of other details from her life. There I am. I was always... Where did I work again? Where did I always work? In a hospital? Are you sad that you've forgotten so many things? What do you mean? That you can't remember things so well anymore. What gives you that idea? You forget things now sometimes, don't you? Not really. Renata was diagnosed with Alzheimer's six years ago. The disease has progressed very rapidly. Her daughter says things would have been simpler if the doctors had discovered her condition earlier. When you're diagnosed and the symptoms are already there, then you can only react to it. If you'd found out earlier, then you could have taken your time, come to terms with it and planned things better. Jochen Herms is trying to make early diagnosis of Alzheimer's a reality. He pursues his research at Munich University's Institute for Neuropathology. In patients with Alzheimer's, protein molecules begin to clump together in the brain, which eventually kills neurons. Herms has closely examined the brains of patients who have died from the disease. The area around the hippocampal formation is the part of the brain that's very important when it comes to memory. In this area, the tissue has atrophied. That indicates neuron loss. And that's a characteristic indication for Alzheimer's disease. Until now, the condition could only be definitively diagnosed when increasingly large gaps became visible in brain scans, far too late. Herms performs research on mice that show signs of the disease, first looking into their brains. Afterwards, he checks their eyes with a special scanner. He looks closely at the retina. Here you see a nerve cell in the retina. In these nerve cells, we expect to see changes that are reflected in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. These typical changes in the retina of patients with Alzheimer's have been described by researchers. We want to correlate the pathology in the retina with that in the cortex. And that could also theoretically work with people. One day, ophthalmologists might be able to diagnose Alzheimer's with a simple eye exam. With the scanner, the doctor can examine the nerve cells of the retina through the lens. The patient first has to take a contrast medium, which can be administered as a pill. The dye is to show whether or not there are cells in the eye containing clumped proteins. That would indicate the patient was contracting the disease. The proteins end up in the retina because it is also part of the brain. Renata Klotz lives in a shared home with other patients suffering from senile dementia. Around one out of every ten Germans over the age of 65 develops Alzheimer's. Because people are living longer, the overall number of sufferers worldwide is on the rise. The disease is especially hard on the relatives of those who are afflicted. The patients themselves can become apathetic or aggressive. Renata and her daughter have had their share of conflicts. They're like two or three-year-olds. They say, I want this, I want that. They're the center of the universe. And you begin to wonder whether or not your life belongs to you anymore. Jochen Herms has been studying the destructive disease and its diagnosis for 15 years now, together with a colleague from the field of chemistry, Boris Schmidt. 
Schmidt is a professor at the University of Darmstadt. His role in the project is to develop the dyes that will later be used to identify the disease in the eyes of Alzheimer's patients. It's very important that the dye penetrate all the way into the brain. It has to end up in the eye and can't be in any way toxic or changed by light in either its function or its structure. It has to break down quickly. You don't want to be seeing things through a color filter for a couple of hours after the test. On zebrafish and their eggs, Schmidt is testing dyes for toxicity and watching how they spread. For more than a thousand substances tested so far, only one holds any promise. Although the research is slow going, it's growing in importance. In the U.S. in particular, there are large centers for Alzheimer's research. Schmidt and Herms don't expect any practical results for at least five or six years, and that's an optimistic estimate, they say. But what use is an early diagnosis when there is still no effective therapy for Alzheimer's disease? That's a difficult question. And you're right. As long as there's no effective therapy for the disease, it's a tough thing to diagnose people with. But you also have the problem that you might not be able to develop a therapy if you're unable to diagnose the disease at an early stage. If you want to treat it at an early stage, before patients experience noticeable impairments, then you need to have a way to see the advance of the disease, even if the patient isn't showing any symptoms. The results will come too late to help Renata Klotz. She's 82 years old and her Alzheimer's is advancing steadily. Her daughter sees changes every day. Are you afraid that your mother might forget you because of her Alzheimer's? Yes. Every time I come, she recognizes me. It's not a problem yet. But it's in the background. Alzheimer's disease was first described more than a century ago. In spite of many advances in the field, there is still no cure. And with an aging population, the fight against the disease has become a race against time.